we continue with the Bayesian alternatives to t-tests. In this case, I'm going to talk about the Bayesian alternative to the independent samples t-test. And in this case, I'm going to use two versions. One is the effect size version, which is the same as in the one sample t-test. And I'm going to add a very brief explanation of the linear model version of the Bayesian alternative to independent samples t-test. So the, the effect size version, we have the same effect size, the gamma, sorry, the delta effect size, and the formula to calculate the effect size is the same. And as sample effect size, we also use the coins t, and the formula is the same as in the one sample t test. The difference is in degrees of freedom, which before was sample size minus one, and in this case is sample size minus two. And the reason is minus two is because we are estimating two means, and I'm going to explain why. So, the other difference with the one sample t test is that the mu zero, instead of being a specified value, like we specified a value in the previous analysis, we, I'm going, we are going to estimate this value from our sample. Okay, so, but mu1 also was estimated from our sample, so how can we've got, we are making two estimations from our sample? Well, following the, the example of the sleep uh, data set with an intervention group and a control group, well, we're going to estimate one mean from the intervention group, and we are going to estimate the other mean from the control group. So that's why, yeah, we've got a sample where we, we divided the sample into two groups, and we are going to make two estimations of the means. That's why we now, uh, um, we've got two degrees of freedom less rather than one de degree, of, degree of freedom less as in the one sample t-test. Okay, let's go to the priors. So the priors are, um, for the null model, we say delta equals zero, or they all, we've got a spike uh, in zero, meaning that no other value is has any uh, credence. And for the alternative model, it's the same as in the previous analysis. For delta possible values, we assign a Cauchy distribution with parameter 0.707. The likelihood in the null model is a t distribution, like in the previous case. The difference is that now delta is fixed to zero rather than any specified value, and the degrees of freedom we already talked about. For the alternative model, is the same as in the one sample t test. T distribution with all the delta, all the values of delta that we allow in the prior of the model. Okay, so let's see uh, the data. So we've got the control group. The mean uh, hours of sleep is 4.996, as we saw before, with the standard deviation of 1.205, whereas the intervention group has a mean of 5.866 and a standard deviation of 1.181. Okay, so we can we see the graph with the... Um, with the data in green for the control group, intervention for in, uh, in orange, and what about the Bayesian analysis? So here is the Bayesian analysis using JASP output, and we can see the prior and posterior distribution in the alternative model. So you can see the prior that is a uh, is, um, has a, a mean of zero and is, uh, is a symmetrical distribution similar to a normal distribution. And we see that the posterior it is a it it has a mean or a median of minus zero point seven hundred with a ninety five percent credible interval that goes from minus zero point nine eight seven to minus 0 0.416. So that confidence interval tells us that they are all negative numbers, and basically that 
the effect size will be negative, meaning that the people in the intervention group, they sleep more than people in the control group, and therefore giving evidence for the alternative hypothesis that the intervention worked and people are sleeping more after the intervention. We can see the base factor, which is base factor 10, 21,900, meaning is that the marginal likelihood for the alternative, for the model of the alternative hypothesis is 20, 21,900 times larger than the marginal likelihood for the model of the null hypothesis. So extremely strong evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So now we are going to briefly talk about the linear model way of doing this uh, analysis. So as I mentioned in previous lectures, and we, we can use the linear model to any analysis. T-test is one of these analyses that in which we can use the, uh, the linear model. So here we see on, on the left-hand side the model of the null hypothesis in which we say that the variable y is distributed normally with a mean of uh, gamma and a standard deviation sigma. And for gamma, we say that gamma equals beta zero. So that we saw this before is the is the mean model, and it's a, a model of the null hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis model. Uh, we also say that y is distributed normally with a, a mean of gamma and a standard deviation sigma, but instead of saying that gamma equals beta zero, we say gamma equals beta zero plus beta one times x. And x here is the whether the group, uh, so whether a participant is in the intervention group, which will have a, a one, or depending on the parameterization of JASP, for example, gives a zero point five to to that group. And if you are in the control group, typically you're given zero, but JASP gives you minus zero point five. So it's two different ways of doing the same. Um, so if we have one versus zero, the difference is one. If you have 0 0.5 versus minus 0 0.5, the difference is also one. So there are different ways of parameterizing the, the analysis and the way that JASP does it is with 0 0.5. So, so basically what, what we, we already went through, what are the, the the priors over over the uh, linear models. So I'm not going to talk about the priors. So, but basically, what we have is a posterior distribution over the uh, beta coefficients in the linear model. So for beta zero, um, the posterior distribution has a mean of 5.432 and a 95 credible interval that goes from 5.252 to 5.581. So 5.432 is a, a value that is very close to the mean of the whole sample, taking into account both groups. And beta one is, um, the, the posterior distribution of beta one has a mean of 0 0.837 and a credible interval that goes from 0 0.485 and 1.130, meaning that beta one, we are quite quite confident that it's 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 a positive uh, value or a slope, and and it means that that group one, uh, or sorry, the intervention group, uh, has a higher number of hours of sleep than the control group. How many more hours in average? 0 0.83, 0 0.837 hours um, more sleep on average. And when we do the base factor, the base factor using the linear model, 
gives us 20, 21,903, which is very similar to the 21,900 that we obtained in the effect size version of the Bayesian alternative to independent sample t-test.